I uh, I have two things to get out of the way. Some housekeeping things. One is, um, as much as I love our fun banter, I'm I'm kind of on a tight schedule. I told Jess I'd go over and help her cook dinner, like before four o'clock so i can only stick around for about an hour so and the other thing is i listened to your podcast with dave gilbert and you pretty much asked him what i'm going to talk about and he gave all the answers <laughs> i was going to give so <laughs> any questions you have for any future guests that i can talk about and we can sort of do a domino effect of uh <laughs> subjects that'd be fun And welcome to Backseat Designers Season V as brought to you by the big internet. I'm speaking in a very posh manner because I'm delighted to be here with two of my bestest of friends, the lovely Space Quest historian himself, Trolls Plymouth. What the hell have we gotten ourselves into here? And Hello. the equally competent Dr. Gareth Millwood. I'm not sure who this is racist against, but it sounds like it's racist against somebody. Yeah, you know, I can't keep it up, so fuck that. Um, anyway, great <laughs> that's to what be your back. Said. Um, hey! Hey! Dave! Actually, that's a funny stuff. No, really. Um, it's g- a hell getting getting story. back in focus. I was um, there. Because you know us three cockwumbles, and uh, of course we have a guest with us. And uh, as has been the case with uh, the other episodes we've done so far, it's a good friend of ours. It's Mr. Francisco Grundislav Gonzalez. How are you, Francisco? Hi, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me back on. I just wanted to, you know, say you guys are doing a great job. I really enjoyed the last season. I really think it ended with a bang. Thank you. There's your testimonial. You can subscribe to the show at backseatdesigners.com. No, um, really, you know. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I debated whether telling that joke. I figured if I did, it would probably bomb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can laugh now because we're not playing you laugh, you lose. That's and right. people who are, uh, you know, aren't watching our Skype right now, which um, includes pretty much everyone but the NSA, uh, can't <laughs> see that Francisco even has the sunglasses as well, uh, along with a pretty nice Miami background, I think. So that's pretty yeah. cool. That was taken on the 4th of July about <clears throat> seven years ago. Wait, <laughs> not that long ago. Anyway, you heard matter. it here first, folks. So, Francisco, let's dive straight into it. Um, tell the lovely people still listening to this um, what you've been up to as of late in uh, the world of game dev. Uh, killing uh, us. <laughs> we said we weren't going to mention it, and I'm sticking to it. Let you guys actually talk. look quite well for being recently uh, alive. Um, well, two of us do. Doing very well. <laughs> oh, that's true. Schadenfreude. <laughs> um... What have I been up to? Well, it feels like the only thing I've been up to <laughs> for the past several months has been working on my game Lamplight City. Lamplight which I... City. Yeah. Lamplight City. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's all I've been doing. I've I've come to realize very recently that I don't have any hobbies outside of game development because game development used to be my hobby and now that it's my career, I don't really have any hobbies so that's all i do that's all i talk about i become and I also a... don't enjoy it one bit well there's there's ups and downs but uh <laughs> yeah I, I feel like i've become a very one-dimensional character because all i do is talk about games i need to take up like cross stitch or something well why this while the subject of your existential crisis <laughs> fascinates me what we were hoping to talk to you about was uh was something <laughs> Was something Dave Gilbert also um, brought up with us, or rather, we brought up with Dave Gilbert. Is everyone all right? <laughs> There's gonna have to be a bit of editing in this one, Gareth. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. So anyway, 
what we were hoping to talk to you about was uh, something that we actually went off on a tangent with uh, Dave Gilbert about when we did our episode with him um, uh, some time back, which was basically the question, does streaming hurt sales? And I think you're kind of in a in a different position than most game developers, if I remember correctly. And if I remember incorrectly, we can always <laughs> talk about that. So what is your position on on the world of game streaming, Francisco? Usually doggy style. <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> And he's still wearing the sunglasses, everyone. He oh, never the, takes them off. The position. I get it now. Yeah, it was a terrible yeah. joke. Please edit that one out. Um, <laughs> well, Frederick, thank you for that very thoughtful and insightful question. Um, I would I, like to... Th th that's the only kind of question I know how to ask. Okay. Well, um, my position has actually shifted a bit. Uh, if you had asked me the same question about a year or so ago, I probably would have been saying something along the lines of streaming sucks don't stream adventure games this is terrible it doesn't it, it help the sales because i was drinking heavily because you know um <laughs> and channeling virginia pretty, capers we both immortal. had some pretty interesting stuff when drinking heavily don't yeah. listen to season two let's not go let's not go into capers territory um but um <laughs> yeah i mean nowadays i kind of think that I mean, it's a very, very much a reality that streaming is very much an important part of games marketing, for lack of a better term. Because if you get noticed by a streamer, that's it's just something you have to you have to realize that if a popular streamer plays your game, you're pretty much getting free advertising. And whether or not that affects sales, I can't really say because I've never been intimately acquainted with marketing details. Uh, but I mean, just from, I mean, I could go off on a tangent and talk a little bit about visibility and steam stuff, uh, real well, quick. Well, let, let me, let me throw myself into a little bit of a tangent here because it happens, so happens that I have a useless degree in communications, which is very closely related to marketing. Hashtag second language. Oh, that, that too. Um, but we, we had no, to read by all of... means throw yourself into the tangent. <laughs> oh yes, the tangent. No, I just mean you, you have a degree in communications, yet you're always saying hashtag second language. So you're. Oh yeah, well it's... communications doesn't mean it's it's not a linguistic education, sir. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just being dumb. <laughs> can, we edit, can we edit that out? No. Um, the... know, all of us have stopped drinking, and the show is more stupid than ever. <laughs> Oh, the uh, the thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, we had to do we had to read a lot of uh, marketing books and stuff like that. And the one thing we got hammered into our heads, other than you know the occasional Friday beer, was uh, in terms of marketing, the most believable, uh, as in the most trustworthy source of advertising is always word of mouth. Oh, yeah. No one, no one's going to pay attention to a TV advert or a radio advert or a banner ad or uh, a paid Facebook advertisement as much as they're going to pay attention to a guy you trust or a girl you trust or what or your pet who can somehow talk who recommends you something. Yeah, definitely. That's so why I've was, always thought it's kind of <clears throat> lately. I, you know, it's kind of weird when I don't watch TV much anymore because I don't have cable. But like if I'm out someplace like at a bar or something, and you know the TV's on in the background. And like a, an advertisement will come up for the latest Assassin's Creed game. I'm like, do you really need to be doing this? Like, is <laughs> standard person sitting in front of the TV watching sports or whatever? Do they really need to be told about this game? It's pretty. I don't know. I think it's just a show of muscle, really. When they do that, it's just like we are <laughs> EA. We have the muscle to inject ourselves into TV ads. Hello, Grandma. Would you like to play my game? <laughs> Yeah, you're selling the idea that this is so mainstream, we've got adverts on during Big Bang Theory, so buy yes, exactly. our game. It's exactly. got microtransactions in it! <laughs> What's that, Germany? Um, what I was going to say is that most uh, streamers, I mean, most people who tune into streamers, this is something I had to learn the hard way, uh, tune into streamers and YouTubers because of the personality. It's kind of a cult of personality thing. So oh, yeah. a, a, a well-known streamer, or if you're, if you're just a fan of a, a certain streamer, their opinion is actually going to count much the same way as a trusted friend. Mm. Because, so, so that's, that's, that's why I guess without, uh, you know, 
without getting into personal details or anything. That's why I think in general that streamers and YouTubers and all of all of that has become perhaps an unwilling part of the marketing machine. I don't think they ever set out to be that, but they have become a pretty tremendous force in oh, games yeah. marketing. Yeah, for sure. As Can we uh, edit in a question there? <laughs> well, I, well think asked, I, I think I think a question definitely is you mentioned that your outlook your outlook uh, way back when was that you know you shouldn't stream adventure games it hurts my sales grumpy old man yells at cloud and what influenced your outlook back then and what's you know apart from the stuff we've talked about has there been anything personal happening to you that's changed it also, may I just interject? I love how Francisco was about to say something, and then Fred Button, you want a question, motherfucker? I'll give you a question. Well, it's, our fucking, it's our fucking show, ain't it? <laughs> Fred actually asked the question that led to the point that I wanted to touch on, which was cool. adventure games specifically uh, as you know, streaming adventure games versus any other genre. Um, but uh, I didn't have any particular personal experiences that made me change my opinion. I just kind of, my opinion changed mostly because of what I saw and what I heard from talking to other people and kind of seeing stuff. Like Dave, on your episode, mentioned the the fact that like when streamers do it as part of a series, the view count tends to drop. Yes. And that's true. And just like... From browsing the comments, like I would see that some people would be like, "Oh wow, this game looks cool. I'm gonna buy it and stuff." So I don't think that it's like <clears throat> I don't I no longer think that it's an instant kill for sales. Like if people are interested in the game, they might buy it. like i've I've watched let's plays myself of games that not that I'm not interested in buying them, but just that I know I'm not going to really have time to play myself. So like I'll watch a few minutes of a let's play to kind of get a general idea of what the game is and how it plays and stuff. But I mean, I'm not going to watch an adventure game because I don't have time. If I don't have time to play it, I certainly don't have time to sit there and watch a 40 hour video or, you know, a series of 40 one hour videos to get the entire story, you know, if I want to get the story, I will buy it and I'll play it myself eventually. And something um, that I always thought that people likening the experience of watching someone play through the story with playing through it yourself forget is that it even before Steam achievements, it was very, very rewarding to move the story ahead yourself. Even sure. if you knew what was coming, there's still kind of a reward there where you go, shit, I triggered something correct just now. I moved the protagonist ahead in this. And I think mm -hmm. people tend to overlook that. Yeah. And as an aside, just as a very narcissistic confession, I will confess that I've watched uh, several Let's Plays of Shardlight, but I haven't sat through, sat through all of them. I've kind of fast forwarded to the parts like the the big sort of uh, parts where I think that might get a reaction out of the player. The mostly parts. just because, yeah, mostly just because I like to see people's reactions to stuff and get a little like, cool, that got a reaction out of people sort of thing. <laughs> not because, hmm. you know, because more often than not, if I watch a Let's Play and like the person, you know, maybe isn't so familiar with adventure games and they're taking a little longer than usual and I get frustrated. I'm like, oh my God, why don't you click on that? But then I realize, oh, well, maybe they're not clicking on it because it's not well designed and not obvious. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I know I know exactly what you mean about uh, fast forwarding to the good bits. Uh, I've only had that experience once and that was uh, with uh, Serena, the game, which got... Uh, oh, actually, yeah, we've yeah. Had, we had it twice. StairQuest as well, but StairQuest was more of a, uh, <laughs> well, we hate everyone, we want them to Stair suffer. Quest, kind of watching StairQuest Let's Plays was like a pure sadistic pleasure. Oh, I'm yeah, not going to lie, I think I, I think I pretty damn near sexually got off on it. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was like strapping someone down and tickling them with a feather and just going, you like that bitch? You like that? Um, wow, but, that's a fucking sight. I could have gone dirtier than that. Come on, a feather? Jeez. Um, anyway. But with, uh, with, your boat. <laughs> with Serena, there's that big reveal at the end that I'm not going to spoil for some reason, although the game has been out for a million years, um, where a lot of let's... Because, because we worked on the game and we're like, yeah, well, is it kind of obvious? Is this guy actually going to shock anyone? And just watching the let's players I, all go, oh, my God, at the end, that was priceless. <laughs> it yeah. was. That's it. The thing, too, just to touch on the last thing I said, is that not only is it 
free uh, advertising, but it's also free beta testing. But unfortunately, at that point, it's kind of too late because if the game's out and streamers are playing it and there's a huge yeah. bug that they find or something that's design-wise that's bad, you can only pretty much just take it as a learning experience for next time. Oh, wait a minute, wait think, a minute. That's do you think a... oh, sorry. then a lot of these streams are becoming about the next time? Because, I mean, you said yourself you'll maybe, maybe watch a couple of videos of a game you know you're not going to play, possibly with the expectation that you might then buy another game that that company makes. And similarly, fit on... On the other end, if you notice that somebody is consistently missing a sort of a trope that's in your games, then maybe you can change that for the next time you make a game. Yeah, potentially. I think more the latter than the former. In fact, I think it might actually be a benefit, for example, like with Wadjidai, for example, if someone watches a Let's Play of a Wadjidai game and they like it and they think it looks cool, maybe they've already spoiled the story or whatever and for that particular game... But if it's a company that has a big catalog of other similar games, then maybe they'll be encouraged to go and buy others um, and that sort of thing. Or a particular developer, and you know, they're, they're playing a game by a particular developer and they see that and they're like, oh, what else has this person done? And then they go and they might explore their other games, which, yeah. Yeah, might- and... Oh, sorry. I, I keep interrupting people. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm off my game here. It's uh, fine. It really shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. I <laughs> <laughs> were at a concert yesterday. It got late. And uh, um, what I wanted to bring up was you, you, you said something about, uh, you know, it's it's free beta testing. But at that uh, at that point, it's kind of already too late and you're looking at the next thing. Um, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to bring up uh, a game that I've been watching. Uh, my favorite YouTuber play a lot, uh, and it's uh, Subnautica. And he, w- he was playing that game. Obviously, it's not an adventure game, but it did have a, a story element that was added in gradually. He started playing it way in early access when it was nothing more than just a sandbox with a lot of waves in it and some fish. And it gra- the, gradually, the story got put in... Um, now I'm looking for a synonym for the word gradually because I just used it once. Uh, piece by piece. There you go. Not nice. technically a synonym, but fuck you. Nice. And the exciting thing was that even though people were playing a buggy early release of the game, the story kept you know, get, getting me intrigued because you you read dev reports to say, oh, now we've added in the Leviathan. And it's was like, what the fuck's in the, a Leviathan? We gotta go see that. Mm-hmm. And even though I'm terrible at, at this type of game, which is because <laughs> that's exactly why I started watching the Let's Play instead. Cult of uh, Personality, one thing. And second, I can't play this fucking game on my own. I would lose my shit. So therefore, I watch other people play it. That was uh, that was very interesting to sort of not just follow the story itself, but follow the development and have the stories sort of come out in increments. I'm wondering, could you like, could you transfer that to adventure games? Like, um... early, early access adventure games. I don't know. I've always said that early access is a terrible platform for adventure games simply because of that. If you put out an adventure game that... See, I mean, it works with Subnautica because, obviously, like you said, it's not a purely narrative-focused game. It's got its mechanics, uh, which I assume are submarine mechanics, and, you know, the story was added in later. Whereas if you have an adventure game, which is the primary focus is the story... It would be kind of weird to be like, okay, well, this is an adventure game about a murder mystery, and now you can play it. But in two months, it's going to be a story about an alien murder mystery. And in another (laughs) couple of months, it's going to be a story about an alien murder mystery in France. Space. France. Yeah, well, <laughs> space would be obvious. No, That's actually a... make it make make you know, make that make Spain. Friends. It's phonetically close to space, yeah. but it's there unexpected. Yeah, so like if you go and you make these major changes to your story, the game is going to be at its core something completely different from the time it starts to the time it ends, which might be an interesting experiment, but I don't I think it it's kind of counter to what adventure or narrative games yeah, and are. what storytelling is all about too you know yeah. you can always tell if you're reading a book or watching a film and oh it was as th- at this point they dropped making heads or tails of it <laughs> alien 3 <clears throat> sure yeah. or, or like it's yeah, exactly what you're saying, because uh, in my mind, just as I was saying this whole thing, I kept thinking, you're just talking about epic, episodic games now. Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I can, uh, let, let me let me twist the question slightly, and then we can get back to intelligent conversation. Um, how oh, about sure. you know? Because I, I, your new game, Lamplight City, has multiple paths, multiple yes. different ways, outcomes. You cannot fail at the game; you can only suck at it. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should make that the new tagline. <laughs> um, so uh, having a game with multiple threats, multiple uh, uh, paths and such, a game like that could ostensibly be in early access because you could watch Let's Players do stuff and then see how uh, how they you know progress in a path that you hadn't thought of and then you could implement the paths as it comes along in early access until, until to the point where, you know, it's just the most convoluted multiple path threading game ever i guess I, I, again i'm I'm still averse to the, the idea of early access for adventure games maybe in like an rpg type thing where you have multiple quests and you could add extra quests and things like that but oh. in an adventure game i mean also speaking as like a solo developer because you know I'm, I'm trying my best to do a multiple path thing but i'm only one person so it's not like i can make this huge epic sprawling thing even if i tried or i'd be working on the game for 10 years but um fred has some experience yeah. in that matter <laughs> uh, actually that doesn't have branching paths and that's, <laughs> no, it, doesn't. it was sure wasn't a one-man project either <laughs> no but I, I see what you're saying i'm just kind of poking the well-dressed bear at this point just want to is that through. is that like a danish phrase that you've translated poking, poking the, the well-dressed bear yeah, but it's a, it's actually a euphemism for pooping. Oh, <laughs> is it? Peggy, eighteen. Oh, it is now. <laughs> did I mention we were at a gig last night and it got very late? You did, well, but I've, yeah, I've, I've. I mean, I've, I sorry? think you're slightly worse for wear than I am at this point. Sorry, what were you saying, Francisco? Oh, nothing. I was actually going to say that. Yeah, the uh, the the idea of the multiple path thing. Um, lends itself better to streaming games. And yes. uh, I think that, you know, it's one of those things that you kind of have to take into account as well. Like, I mean, you don't, I'm not saying that if you're going to design an adventure game, you should definitely say, well, I'm definitely going to make it a multiple solution, multiple path thing. But I encourage you to think about it because while it is a little bit more work, it's slightly more rewarding in the long run because, you know, it's, people like it. I mean, it's always cool when two people play the same game and they're talking about it and they're like, oh yeah, I, I talked to this character and the other person's like, well, I didn't see that character. And, it, and it's one of the unique things to the medium as well. It's something you can't do with a book or with a film, so why not yeah. play with it because you've got the tools? Yeah, unless it's a choose-your-own-adventure book, but we all went back and read every <laughs> single one anyway. So, let's be honest. Do you, think, um, do you think the advent of streaming has in any way changed that? Because, you know, I'm brought back to the pre-internet days where you would, you know, the, your only window into, you know, how you might progress in this game, if you were completely hooked off the net, would be to talk to people who'd already been there, you know, and ask them what they'd done, if they could drop any hints. But now you're just yeah, a Google search you. away from a walkthrough or a hint or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think definitely the whole design philosophy of adventure games as games to stump you for for a really long time, that's completely obsolete. I mean, it's been obsolete for since the advent of the internet, like you say. But but yeah, I think I think just adventure game design as a whole has focused more or and should focus more on telling an interesting story. And I mean, that's, I feel like I'm saying stuff that has been obvious to all of us for years, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that focusing on a game where the story is interesting and the characters are relatable and, and you're going to have an interesting time playing it. And maybe there's some puzzles here and there to kind of give you a little bit of a challenge. So it's not just a, you know, click, 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 I'm done playing the game. Um, I think that that's, that's really where we're at right now. But I think so. I think that you know, adding in the possibility of having multiple uh, paths and different things, variety between playthroughs helps, and it also helps for streaming purposes because a linear story. Once you get the linear story, it's like watching a movie. That's it. I mean, plenty of people go back and watch movies again, but people don't play games as much because. 
unless they're like weirdos like me who goes who go back and play you know decades old games again um i think we're all kind of weirdo well that's true yeah but i mean the reason we do it is because well we have various reasons for doing it i do it because i enjoy experiencing the games again and some games like you know say secret of monkey island when i first played it I played it and I went back and over the years I played it more and more and every time I would play it I would discover a new joke or a different line or something like that because there was so much in there even though it was a linear story that there was just a lot of content to uncover but in just (laughs) saying that about Monkey Island I've just realized that yeah you know if someone were to stream Monkey Island you'd get the story but if there was a bunch of stuff in it that would encourage people to go in and play it and find stuff on their own. So I guess the solution, if you don't feel like adding multiple paths to your game is to just put a bunch of hidden, not hidden, but put a bunch of extra discoverable content in it that you might not necessarily find unless you're being super thorough. Mm, Cause I mean, yeah. I've, I've seen different, I've watched, like I said, I've watched a few different let's plays and I've, there's, there's one let's player in particular who, I always enjoy watching because this person is very like they this is going to sound really pretentious to say, but they know how to play adventure games because they actually look at everything and they interact with everything and like they get the full experience like, you know, anyone can play through, say, Paradigm and get the story. But to really get the full experience from that game, you'd have to like talk to everything because everything has a custom talk response. And yeah, so like. Yeah, I think Paradigm is a great example of a game that doesn't have multiple paths but has a lot of content. And it was very streamer-friendly because it's a funny game. And um, a lot of streamers actually, I think I think some streamers had voice roles in it. Um, it, is, it is arguably less about progressing in the story than it is, you know, exploring the environment. Yeah, exactly. And like interacting with all the wacky characters and stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. And um, another, another thing we could bring up, uh, if if you don't have a multiple path uh, thing going on in your game, um, another thing that I think has been sorely lacking from current adventure games, and another thing I think would make current adventure games more streamer friendly is to adopt a more non-linear design philosophy, like the old LucasArts adventure game, like Monkey Island 2, for instance, or Monkey Island 1, for that matter, where you have a, a laundry list of uh, things you can go and uh, are meant to be solving, but you can go about them in pretty much any order you want. And yeah, I think that, a lot that of definitely helps, too. Games are very linear, like this very A to B to C to D. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a classic uh, design uh, structure that I think um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, did the Telltale Monkey Island games have that? I forget. Did anyone play those? I oh did. yeah, but it's it's I been can... a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. But I know that Dave Grossman was involved, and Dave Grossman is very much a fan of the three things to do at any time. I mm. think it did have that at the Vacalian uh, segment, which was like episode two or something. You had to right. get like three items or something, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically been a series hallmark, but also kind of a, a LucasArts stable as well. Uh, it's I, a think, Dave Gross. I think all of the, all of the Blackwell um, episodes do that, don't they? Well, yeah, the Blackwell episodes do that in that there's multiple, at least the, the ones with more than one because I, I know legacy didn't do it but i know unbound you could solve the two uh ghosts independent of each other and yeah in any other black hole game that had more than one ghost you could usually uh kind of progress through the investigations individually at your own pace hmm. uh, I, I never got further than talking to that dear detective character over and over again he was such a pleasant man who Durkin? Uh, he, w- he wasn't as nice as the um, he wasn't as nice as the receptionist in the hotel in the hospital. Oh, that's do you, right. Yeah. He do was you a- know that I am? I'm actually. I don't know. You should probably edit this out so as not to spoil things. But I'm- wow. Oh, dear. So anyway, uh, non-linear. Uh, I think the reason why I brought that up was because back when we had this discussion. In uh, you know your early earlier thinking, Francisco, mm-hmm. when you yes. were against streaming, I perhaps quite selfishly 
try to sway you to the other side a bit. Well, it uh, worked, so good job. <laughs> you, f you found another person who actually could uh, explain it to you in a less than infuriating way, and uh, it's like, oh, right, that guy makes sense. Um, other things that potentially could make adventure games, uh, or at least narrative-driven games, more streamer-friendly, because... You know what? What we're trying to avoid here is what we've been talking about all along: is that people will watch a stream of a game, and then not go out and buy the game because they've already experienced the story. So back when we were having this discussion, my knee-jerk reaction was to say, "Well, just put in multiple paths, just put in you know different outcomes, do what Blade Runner the game did, have different characters turn out to be replicant or human." Just you know. Can I can I ask you not to interrupt you, even though I totally did? But can I ask you? Uh, <laughs> Really kind of an asshole question just now. I love it when you do that. Have you ever designed a game with multiple paths? <laughs> oh! oh sick I, have, I have actually. I have actually. It, oh, okay, cool. it, it hasn't been made, but I did uh, I did try to do a um, design for a an adventure game based on The Thing, the oh. uh, John Carpenter m movie. Oh, cool. Uh, How many copies did you sell? No, oh. no. <laughs> it, it's not made, and it probably never will because of many reasons, most of which is that I suck. <laughs> oh, I think no, you're it's sad now. Don't do no, that. you're great, <laughs> great. Soul. I think I think the number one. Let's let's be realistic. I think the number one issue is probably licensing. Yeah, that and uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a hefty programming deal. But I get, I get the case. I mean, had had I signed up to do that as the programmer, I would have probably walked away after a span of five or six hours. And yeah. you spent ten years on Volhall Strikes Back. Anyway, I definitely get what you're saying. It is a convoluted mess to have different paths going through a game. I am I'm not taking that away. That's a lot more writing. It's a lot more planning. But that's, that's actually my original question. What other things could we brainstorm here with our mighty brainy powers to make adventure games I more... Think that's pushing it. <laughs> well, well, I give to... streamers oh, access to a, a lo-fi copy, so it's like in half resolution. <laughs> <laughs> right, brain trust over. Go home, everyone. If, if, you try, if you try, if you try copying the digital file, this files it erases half your hard drive. We're right. not anti-piracy here. We're talking streamers. That's not. Wasn't Sean Mills almost calling streamers pirates or thieving cunts or whatever? Yeah. I well, you know. It was four o'clock in the morning. I mean, there used to be there used to be copyright uh, warning. I mean, well, there still are copyright warnings on films. That's like you know, this is for your own personal use. If you show it unauthorized in and you pay, you charge people money for it. I think that's the that's the thing. You know, streamers streamers don't charge you money to watch them play games. Um, yeah, something on that note I've always liked is that you can't go all, go showing DVDs in prisons because you know they've. Yeah. They don't and have enough roots. of a rough deal in there. We kind of have to smear it in their faces. <laughs> we we, <laughs> we we sort of talked about it with um, Dave in uh, an earlier episode this season. But um, what do you? Because trolls, you are the the sort of the the voice of all streamers here on the podcast. What kind of responsibilities yeah. do you think that streamers have to game makers? Well, here's the thing. That I, uh, thank you for asking that because that actually. Uh, it ties into what I was going to ask Francisco, so we can sort of bounce this ball off to our, our guest. But I, I think there is a responsibility to uh, of for streamers. Sorry, language failure. Uh, there's a responsibility for streamers to um, split uh, gameplay into several episodes, so that people can watch the first episode and go, "Okay, I want to buy this game," uh, because you can't trust people to you know hit Control W and you know, stop watching and stream. Um, no, I, what am I saying? Just, just cut all that bullshit out. <laughs> the voice of all YouTube streamers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just putting me on the spot. There. Now, see the just the, do anything. <laughs> the problem is, I think, is that streamers don't really owe game developers much in terms, other than 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 the res the respect, really, for for making the game. Um, what they, I mean, because I've seen. 
uh, games where there's a big red flashing button in, on the main menu that says, please don't stream after chapter three, or you've got the persona people who uh, sent out angry letters to YouTubers and streamers that said if they played more than 45 minutes of the game, they'd get a, 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 a takedown, you know, YouTube copyright takedown and such. Um, and then that that's just bullshit. So so on that front, I'm really sort of defensive because, you know, the streamers don't actually owe the developers anything other than the respect of having developed the game. However, that doesn't imply that that shouldn't imply that there's this sort of animosity or friction between streamers and game developers. It should be a symbiotic relationship, not an antagonistic one. Yeah. So so the, the 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 reason why I get a little defensive about that is because really because of those examples, you know, the subsurface circular has that thing that says, don't play past chapter three persona, the, the takedowns and such um, that's antagonistic. Just work with the streamers instead, frankly, make your games better so that it doesn't. So there isn't that spoiling of, I don't, I don't know how to, how to, how to put this without. No, no, I, I, okay, I, I kind of, I, th I think I can get where, you, where you're coming from because obviously no streamer can do anything without a game actually being made. So that's sort of a given that you need to have that kind of respect for the people that are able to make those games. But by the same token, it goes back to what you were saying earlier that it's the it's the personality that can sell the game. And so if you're going to cut off all personality from your game, um, you're you're almost. I mean, maybe maybe it's the right of the game maker to be able to do this but it seems a bit sort of i don't know self-defeating to cut yourself off from a particularly useful form of advertising mm. and i'm i'm really interested to hear francisco's point of view just to keep the spotlight off of me because apparently i can't formulate a fucking sentence to save my life <laughs> it uh, was a late night <laughs> it was a late night did i mention we were at a gig you did a mention. great gig <laughs> Um, Get in my car. I feel, no, over to you, Francisco. You know, I was actually going to ask about that. Does he have any other songs? <laughs> he has very many. <laughs> Does he just spend two hours playing that song over and over again? He is an <laughs> aw awesome performer. I mean, I knew we were going to go in there listening to a shitload of good music. I did not expect to see a near 60-year-old man thrashing about on stage to industrial metal. Especially it having gold. just won the Oscar the night before. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's um, Gary Oldman. I don't know what he did for us to need this new one, but he got replaced apparently. Uh, yeah. Gary Oldman is younger than Gary Newman. Did anyone know that? I think we've mentioned it on this show about eight times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what was the question? Uh, something, something antagonistic uh, relationship versus a symbiotic relationship. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. You know, I'm not it's... talking about romantic relationships, but relationships yeah. between totally. game developers and streamers. I think Wait. it should be a symbiotic relationship. And what your your question before about, uh, you know, if, if streamers owe the game developers anything, I no, I don't think, I like you said, I think that it, they just owe them the respect. And also, like, just as from a personal point, like, if there's an embargo or something, don't break the embargo. Um, I know that Dave told the anecdote about the beta tester who streamed yeah. a very early beta version of Shardlight. And like, I found out about it through, I don't even remember. I think some, it was like a Twitter alert or something. And I was like, oh, uh, what? And so I had to call the Dave police. And have him come <laughs> be like, oh, hey guys. And oh, so yeah, that's like, that's pretty shitty. That's like. That's shitty. You know, that falls under the respect thing. I mean, yeah. if there is an embargo. Because I mean, you know, uh, most. <laughs> Enough. Yeah, most big studios make you sign an NDA to beta test, and as an indie, you could do that, but it's such a waste of time, and there's really no way to enforce that, that it's yeah. pointless. So when you ask people to beta test, unless you have like a dedicated team or something that you always use, usually you're crowdsourcing people from the internet. <coughs> uh, <laughs> the like some, internet. Some people in this very chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You've given, you've already given me feedback, which is great. Um, but yeah, so like you know, you have to kind of go on trust that the these people are not going to turn around and like stream the game or whatever. Like I had somebody, I was showing Lamplight City at IndieCade East um, a couple of weeks ago, and this guy came up and interviewed me, and 
he asked for a link to the demo because he didn't have time to play it. And then he emailed me and he was like, hey, is it okay if I play through this demo and like post it somewhere? And I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. Because, I mean, ultimately, this is what people are seeing at these conventions. And it's going to be the game's demo eventually. It's not like it's a full version of the game that he could play and show bits that are not finished yet. You know, so I don't mind that. Um, but yeah, if it's like an unfinished beta version of the game and you're streaming it as though it were the finished product, that's that's not cool. Um, so yeah, and uh, there was one other thing, but I forgot what it was. So if I remember it, I'll interrupt and scream, hey, I remembered what it was. Was it, was it me belittling the audiences of Let's Players saying that they have to press Control w so they don't spoil games for themselves? Because that joke no. just... When, no, 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 no. Uh, it was, I actually remembered, you, it was about talking about the uh, the games that say, please don't d- don't stream past this or whatever. Huh. Actually, the one game that I've experienced this with was Batman Arkham Knight on PS4, which was really interesting because obviously, like, have you, have all of you or any of you played it? I have not. Yeah, I've, I've played it, but uh, you know, I usually just throw the controller away in a bitch fit once I have to drive the Batmobile. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there were some pretty like big reveals towards the end of the game, and there's actually a section towards the end of the game where you get an alert on PS4 where it's like, streaming is not going to work now, or like the the game has stopped recording because you know the PS4 Ooh. has. Yeah. It records video, like, it's always recording video so you can save, like, the last 30 seconds of your gameplay or whatever. But when it got to that section, it's like, the PS4 has stopped recording now, and then it turned back on after the spoilery section. So, like, they built in a thing oh, wow. where you could not, yeah, you couldn't record that or stream it, presumably, if you were streaming it. It probably blacked out the screen or something. And I don't re- recall anyone giving the game any backlash or even really talking about it. But, And I don't know how they implemented it, because I've never seen any other game do that. Um, and I don't know if they did it on PC as well. But. I would say that falls into the uh, disrespect. Not that, uh, I mean, let's flip it. Game developers don't really owe streamers anything either, but uh, other than the respect. And that falls into kind of the disrespect part, I think. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm coming off as slightly antagonistic in all of this. I don't really know why. Uh, cause well, I mean, you should you should play these games because they're not adventure games for sure, but the storytelling in them is pretty great. And, you know, I, I can definitely appreciate the sentiment behind blocking streaming on a platform where it's possible. I mean, to, I to, to keep the twist safe, if only for a certain period of time. You know, I, games, AAA games these days are fucking expensive. I would mm. be fucking pissed off if I went out, bought Arkham Knight at full retail price, only to have someone like you spoil it for me. <laughs> Here, here's, the thing. here's the thing that I've been thinking well, about. The, um, see, the problem is that, that that drives a sort of wedge between what is supposed to be the symbiotic relationship because the second something like a barrier comes down, at least my initial reaction is, no, you fucking don't. Uh, I'm going to go out and buy a fucking capture card now. Um, it's um, I think it is underestimating those who watch Let's Plays first and foremost. And that was, that was actually the, the joke I was trying to make that fell no, so no, no, no. That's no, yeah. It's it's no, it's a good point that no, there's a th- there's a third person here that has a responsibility, and that's the viewer. Um, the yes, viewer yes. is spoiling yes, it no. by continuing to watch a series where they know mm-hmm. that story elements are going to be revealed. Yeah, but I mean, exactly. maybe I'm slightly pessimistic. But I mean, this this is all fine and dandy when every single streamer uh, has good intentions and is not Logan Paul, basically. But you know, <laughs> I mean, this is just this is just kind of getting into the general territory of spoilers, anyway. I mean, it's not the same as you know something like Psycho. You know, when Psycho first came out, and there was the signs that were like, anyone who comes in late is not going to be let into the theater because you can't. You have to watch this movie from the beginning, which was like unheard of back in the sixties. Mm, and, mm-hmm. and you know, there's that Agatha. I think it's an Agatha Christie play, The Mouse, or something like that. That like traditionally, the at the very end, the all the actors come out and are like, don't tell anybody the ending because everyone, it's a surprise. And you know, of course, people are going to go out and tell people the ending. It's a Obviously. play. <laughs> but 
But in the case of, you know, as opposed to, yeah, as opposed to something like, you know, a TV show or something where everyone's watching it at the same time and then immediately they go to Twitter and they hashtag, you know, Walking Dead and they're like, oh my God, I can't. Oh, uh, yeah. Or people, or people on Facebook, you know, yeah, people on exactly. Facebook apparently with no concept of time zones or no regards to them. Thanks a fucking bunch you cunts and i mean you could argue that as a as a viewer if you're interested in it and you know that people are going to be doing that you can just keep off of social media and sure that's fine but you know it's the same thing with games like in the case of arkham knight this particular reveal twist whatever comes after you know you you've already played the game for several hours it's at least Mm. a 15 or 20 hour game you know you've been playing for a while and if you're live streaming and you're watching a live streamer play it, then you know you obviously you've invested all the time in it, and you're, you know, it's you are as the viewer are going out and watching it, and if you get spoiled by it, that's kind of your fault because yeah, that's true. You know, exactly. you and- are, you asked for not to use that terrible phrase. You asked for it, but you know, you are you should know better that you, there was the possibility of getting spoiled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you've been with it so long and you know that that's that something big is going to happen. Yeah, if, if that's what happens, you know, if it's if it's by the rules, you know, I just can't shake the thought that there'll, there'll always be some assholes shouting Snape kills Dumbledore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so but like, that, that's, that's different because you are soliciting a, a let's play by by watching it. I, there's a better word for it. I don't know. It's something that hasn't to do with prostitution. But you are you're basically <laughs> put on a video. You expect it to show you the game. If you go on Facebook or Twitter, some asshole uh, spoils the TV show that you were watching. You didn't ask that person to spoil it for him. But if you go on YouTube and you put on a fucking video of a game, you are asking that streamer or that youtuber to spoil it for you and you have you have the opportunity to just hit control w and close the window before you get spoiled too much and i'll i'll say this in the defense of viewers and i don't know if this is a minority uh or if this never happens and i'm just one of the lucky ones but i was streaming a game called bear with me which uh takes a very sharp turn at the end bear with me Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, how we poked that little bear! It's Did somebody you... dropped the soap again. <laughs> and and uh, there were people in the Twitch chat when I was streaming this game up until the final reveal, and there is a big final reveal, and they were so invested in the final reveal that there was actually a dude in the tw- in the Twitch chat that went, "All right." I know the reveal. I'm going out to buy this game anyway because fuck me, that's amazing. Yeah. And I and I, I did the same thing with Fran Bo. I've never actually played all the way through Fran Bo. I watched my favorite YouTuber play and I went, fuck me, I am buying that game because those devs are awesome. Yeah. I think that happens more often than not, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it does. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, there is definitely an, an an effect of sort of an idolization. You know, you find a favorite streamer, and then you you basically listen to what they have to say, and they get to influence your choices quite a lot. I think. Mm. Yeah, I got way, <laughs> my favorite YouTuber is Jack Septiguy. I will okay. watch pretty much any shitty game that man plays, and he has played a lot. He's a little too shouty for my liking, but that's because I'm a grumpy old man. <laughs> He's like, turn down that noise, kid. <laughs> well, it's, it's a cult of personality thing again. It, it's, it's pretty much to the point where I don't care what game he's playing. Just as long as I get, you know, get to hear the commentary, and I've actually had people tell me that the reason, I mean, I've had, had, had people tell me that I, they they don't give a shit about adventure games. They don't really play adventure games. They're listening. Uh, they're listening to my commentary because my voice puts them to sleep. I've genuinely gotten that comment. Hmm. So apparently, my voice helps them sleep. I see it, but I don't hate it. I wish that was the case. You, you should know, start I'm doing uh, ASMR let's plays. My God, you're not <laughs> the first person to actually say that. That's weird. Yeah. I Actually, think I the, just opened up. I just opened up Facebook right now, and someone posted in the Sierra Gamers uh, group, um, "Who wins for, w- for worst voice acting in Sierra Adventure Games?" And one person nominated the Ice Wolf from King's Quest V, which is sad. 
But I someone, will find the Yeti. Yeah. Someone else said <laughs> Kingsman. <laughs> oh, he's quick on the draw, isn't he? He is. Someone said King's Quest Five Bandits. GK1 narrator. Ugh. Oh, God, no. Someone's what? mistaken. Are we boring you that much that you're going on Facebook groups? Maybe we should wrap up the episode. No, yeah, I think that's a pretty, you know, that is a, as good an indicator as any that the conversation is coming to a natural end. Uh, what, what have we learned? Because well, we were all kind of sort of in agreement, weren't we? I think we have learned that it is a very, very complex problematic and that uh, the four of us are not fit for reaching a verdict. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess I don't so. know anything about Mark. I mean, which I mean, is pretty much every conclusion to every single episode on the show, anyway. Hmm. Well, I think I think like most podcasts, it's good to uh, rather than definitively answer a question. I think it's good to offer many points for discussion and contemplation. Mm. See, this is what I do. This is why I don't definitively ask any questions either. Well, there you go. Grand sweeping statements. I do. I do actually want to hear from uh, the good doctor. He sounded like he was about to go wrap up something big on that. Uh, and I do have a, like a final question for uh, Francisco, just to, to lead us off, um, just so we might get some discussion going all over on the uh, Facebook group. Um, well, but, I, mean, I was I was I was just going to say that that my um, I guess my position on it is as as a sort of a an awful uh, centrist kind of person that I can kind <laughs> of see I can kind of see both sides because I I guess for a living I create stuff but the difference is that I well <laughs> not today because I'm on strike but normally um, I, <laughs> I get paid a I get, I, I get paid a I get paid a salary to cl- create my stuff. So regardless of whether a thousand people read it or twenty thousand people read it, I get paid the same amount. Now, obviously, Francisco, you're not in that position. Your your currency is sales. Well, but but I mean, even even <laughs> even if, even, if, even if you were employed directly by a studio and being paid a salary, yeah. your 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 long term livelihood is still based on how many how many units you can shift. Whereas... Sure, because if the studio stops, it doesn't sell because of streamers, then they and obviously the that studio that. will shut down and then I'll get fired. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, it's a trick so, but but I can also see the point of view of, you know, obviously streamers are providing a, a free advertising service. So it's, you know, right. I, I can just see it from both sides. And I thought we covered both sides reasonably well. Mm. Oh, yeah. did we? because what I wanted to ask Francisco was, to turn the clock back and bring out his old arguments so that we might get some discussion going. How could someone potentially see streaming and YouTubers uh, as a a ruinous institution in the world of gaming? How could they see? Yeah, well, the the discussion, that was a weird way of phrasing it. I do realize that. You mean, what's what's the argument against streaming? Yes, exactly. Because I, th- I think we've been kind of, you know, on the same page throughout this. We may have covered both sides, but we've been kind of on the same page. So I just want to get some some opposing views in there. They don't have to necessarily be your own anymore. I sure. Just want, just want well, to I mean, the, the the main argument I would say against streaming of adventure games, particularly, is that is that that if a streamer plays a game that has a linear story and the audience. If it's a big streamer that has, you know, several million or thousand subscribers, I guess I should say that backwards. If they have several thousand or million subscribers and these people who are potential customers experience the game and see the game already, they then have no incentive to go out and buy this, the game themselves. And therefore, this has now cost you as a developer several thousand or million sales but that's being a bit optimistic because there's no guarantee that every single member of the audience is going to buy the game i'm kind of sh- defeating the question here by refuting it <laughs> as soon as i've answered it but yeah i mean there's no guarantee that every single subscriber to this streamer or youtuber or whatever is going to be interested in the game there's no guarantee that every single person is going to watch the let's play there's no guarantee that everyone who watches the let's play was a guaranteed sale until they watch this there's no guarantee that the you know that the people are going to even think that and say oh i'm not going to buy this game because i already see it um so 
Yeah, but the main argument is that that if you're oh. streaming an adventure game, then there's no incentive to buy it because you've already experienced it. But again, it goes back to the watching and playing are two completely different things. Mm-hmm. Active, and, passive experiences. And the asshole kind of argument I brought up at the time was, well, make games that you can't see in one sitting. And I got a little polite slap on the nose from you uh, oh. for, for just saying that, and I respect that. It, it's well, make, it make a game that demands to be played. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> this has been a very interesting chat, actually, with a lot of, of different um, stuff to take away from, you know, actual viewpoints held by us, and, a you know, a, devil, a, bit of, a bit of devil's advocate as, as well. Um, Francisco, if people want to hit you up on uh, the interwebs and uh, basically make you yell at them by discussing this with you, <laughs> where might they find you? He doesn't yell. Well, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Grundislav Games. That's G-R-U-N-D-I-S-L-A-V Games, all one word. Um, you were going to do your logo thing. I uh, thought about it, but nah. No, nah, um, logo jingle, it's good. Yeah, and if you, well, if you want to check out my, my previous works, you can go to GrundislavGames.com. That's G-R-U-N-D-I-S-L-A-V Games.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, I did it just for you. Um, and, uh, you can also, I mean, you can find information about Lamplight City there. But if you're, if you are just, if it, if typing out Grindelwald Games is just too much for you, you can just type lamplightcity.com, and that'll take you to the Lamplight City webpage directly. You can also check out the Steam page where you can wish list it. Ooh. And if I keep being more lazy, there's gonna be a beta test slot available real soon if you wanna play it. <laughs> Francisco actually sent me a build of it, uh, I was going to say years and years ago, and I didn't stream it, I also didn't play it, but that's because I'm a bad friend. Yeah, that's fine. I sent it out to like 16 fine. beta testers, and I only got a response from like five, so it's Ouch. a little... It's a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, uh, so Fred it, got a chance to beta test it, and uh, Trolls got a chance to beta <laughs> test it. This is... Um, well, to to be fair, I I didn't actually get a chance to beta test it. He just sort of sent it to me, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you were expecting me to beta. Well, test. I tweeted I tweeted an open call, and Fred responded. I didn't. I don't recall getting a DM from uh, from a certain doctor. That's no. because he's busy. He's busy picketing. <laughs> yeah, I'm on strike. Picketing his nose, most likely. But anyway, oh! you guys can. <laughs> You guys can continue to duke it out by, I don't know why the hell you would do it, mentioning our own Twitter, but uh, you and everyone else listening can find us on Twitter at BS Designers. You can also go to our website, BackseatDesigners.com, where you can find all the links to previous episodes. Don't listen to season two. Uh, our YouTube <laughs> channel and whatnot. Uh, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash backseat designers where you can throw money at us because, you know, we've only been talking so much about theft and, you know, you know, might as well go the whole nine yards. Hey, um, if we use the funds for something now, we actually go to conventions. We go out into the real world. We've stopped doing coke and bitches and what and we go to gigs where it gets very late and finally if you want to get into an actual discussion where you can write more than what is it now 280 characters you can do so at our open facebook group simply called backseat designers i think that's about it so yeah. um without further ado the bear is very well dressed it got very late at the gig and i do believe no one <laughs> dropped the soap sorry mrs cavers <laughs> say goodbye trolls oh, fuck. <laughs> goodbye goodbye gareth bye and it's a goodbye from me as well hope you've enjoyed this specially shortened episode see you on the chrono stream no more for today mm-hmm.